If you love Star Wars and love the excitement of chasing your favorite Star Wars collectibles, the Star Wars Digital Card Trader collecting app from Tops is for you. Download the free app from iTunes or Google Play and collect your favorite images from the classic 1977 Star Wars cards to Clone Wars, Star Wars Rebels, The Force Awakens, and much more. Collect and trade with friends new and old through the Star Wars Digital Card Trader collecting app from Tops. These are the cards you're looking for. Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are with Dan Z and Corey Club, the podcast you're looking for. This is <laughs> yes. For an entire generation, people have experienced Star Wars the only way it's been possible on the TV screen. But if you've only seen it this way, you haven't seen it at all. This is the podcast you're looking for. We've been waiting for you. The force is strong here, even stronger than the coffee. At last! Where have you been? Welcome to Coffee with Kenobi. Here are your hosts, Dan Z and Corey Club. Just like that, Corey, we get the announcement last night that there is going to be a brand new Rogue One trailer premiering. And before we even talk about this, as is our custom, we have not talked about this at all together. I mean, I have mm-hmm. talked about it, of course, pretty much all day and online <laughs> and such, but not to you, not to my co-host. So before we talk about the actual trailer, let's start with what did you feel when you found out and the build up to it and then actually watching it? Yeah, sure. It's it's interesting because like, you know, they announced the trailer coming out. Obviously, it's usually it's like a morning show or it's a uh, it's, this time it was ABC uh, was it the uh, Today Show that came out with, I think? Good Morning America. Uh, that, I'm sorry, Good Morning They're America. They're both owned right? by ABC, so that's why. Gotcha. I got all oh, that. There you go. Franchise. Um, so it, it's cool to see like them kind of gearing us up for you know something that's coming out the next day. We're not hunting and pecking for it around the internet. It's nice to kind of be able to be relaxed about it, in my essence, and how I kind of take it. Really? Um, I, I, yeah. I, I may ask you to explain that, sir. Sure. I mean, it's interesting because like I get amped up about something like I'll, I'll find out about a new trailer or a, a, a new announcement coming out through, um, you know, Facebook or Twitter or me, you know, uh, you, yeah, exactly. Our good friend, Jeff, or, or you know, just roundabout ways. Um, and that's fine too. Um, because, I, but also I feel like I'm like, Oh, I'm gonna, I missed it. I was a day ahead or a day behind or whatever the case may be. And I feel like I want to be on point with some of that stuff. Maybe that's just my own way of thinking about things. But when they announce it officially and say, Hey, it's coming, you know, Thursday morning, um, check it out on the show. It's going to premiere type thing. I feel comfortable saying, okay, I can, I can schedule my day, uh, around this. Um, and that's comfortable for me. Hmm. You said or odd something. Or crazy. <laughs> What's that? Or odd or crazy. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> Interesting. Well, here's the deal. Um, at first, you weren't sure you were even going to watch it. That's that's kind of the big right. thing that I was interested in as far as, like, how'd that happen? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We kind of talked about it through some texts, and uh, I mentioned that I don't think I'm going to take a look at it. And that's the reason behind that was just for one, to kind of save myself from just going – going into it too much. I don't want to, I I tend to overthink, um, trailers and such and, you know, to understand the plot line, the characters and, and they do give away stuff in trailers and things. I, I I will say that nowadays, I think they give away too much. Um, and I was, I just didn't even watch them. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a good way to, to to kind of go about it and just go with a fresh mind on, on, on films. But, you know, I, I was of the mind of, Oh, it's not going to show a whole lot more. It's probably just something they just kind of mash up between the last two, the teaser and the, the first trailer, and it's kind of the same old, same old, you know. And I thought, well, I'll just kind of maybe I'll skip this one. And um, I woke up this morning, and right away I saw a link to it uh, in my Facebook feed, and I, I thought, no, I'm not going to watch it. And I kind of got going about my day, and and I thought, you know what, I I will watch it because I just want to I want to be able to talk about it, and enjoy it as a fan, and. And check it out. So walk downstairs. Like I said, I enjoy having that, being able to be ready. Then, of course, going to, you know, linked up to this official Star Wars page and viewing it that way. Um, on my, I always go to my desktop to watch it, headphones on, kind of cranked, but a little bit louder than normal. Just feeling the ambiance of that. And that's, that's kind of how I first kind of took it in um, and uh, really enjoyed it. 
I enjoyed it too. I enjoyed it immensely for, again, Rogue One seems to be doing this to me where mm. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, but not like I was episode seven and right. not like I am for episode eight. It just, it feels different. It's, it's a very different organic kind of a substance to it. It's really unusual, but in a, in an awesome, beautiful kind of way. So I found out about it last night and I thought, well, okay, that, that's cool. It seems about like the timing is right on. So mm. I kind of forgot about it just because, you know, life takes over and you do all kinds of different things. Sure. And sure. then when I woke up, I didn't think forget about it that much because the first thing I thought of when I woke up is, <laughs> oh, the new Rogue One trailers today. And I, and I was so fascinated by the fact that you were actually considering not watching it. And now mm. I knew that that wasn't going to happen because I knew I would record <laughs> this show and you knew I would pester you until sure. you watched it. Exactly. But in this day and age, is it even possible to not watch it. I mean, especially doing what we do, you know, for our, is our passion project, which is our show and our site. Is that even possible to do? That's a good question. It's a really good, good question because I don't think so. I mean, not, not unless you were, you know, not involved online, social media wise, as far as, you know, connecting with fan, friends and family and, um, and fandom, you know, if you're not, I mean, you have to be, you're connected somehow, some way, and somebody's going to link to it or, you know, comment about it. I mean, I had people actually commenting about it that I didn't know were that big of Star Wars fans. They just happened to link to it and say, oh, yeah, hey, I watched this, blah, blah, blah. And it's cool to see that kind of strike through our, our culture, you know, like that. Star Wars is still as big as it is, and it still makes an impact. It still trends. And in this day and age where we're, you know, we can flip open our, our, phones in our pockets and get instant notifications. Um, Do you, you have a flip phone? Difficult. I know. I flip, I flip out of my pocket. I guess I, <laughs> I don't know if it's a magic trick or whatnot, but no. <laughs> flip phone, yeah, that's right. Look at that. Wow, we have a time machine. So, yeah, there you go. But yeah, I, I don't. I think it's very hard to avoid. It is hard to avoid. And I, and I, I mean, in a perfect world, I don't even know if that's the right thing, I, how I want to explain this, but mm. it, could I have gone through the next two months without watching it? Uh, I mean, I'm pretty Typical. disciplined, but I don't think I could. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that I really think it's important. I mean, Star Wars is great about giving you trailers with gorgeous, lush imagery, but not necessarily telling you too much of what's going on. I can't think of a single Star Wars trailer that really broke down the plot so much that it tells you exactly what's going to happen. Now, mm-hmm. you can't say that about a lot of trailers. It's more about... uh. Right, getting right to it and showing you all the G was explosions and things like that, uh, and sometimes the trailers will even give away a twist. But oh, this, absolutely, this yeah. hasn't happened, I don't think. So well, this, uh, this is a bit of a meta commentary on what what it means to watch a trailer, isn't it? <laughs> Let's move on to the actual trailer itself. Uh, I know you watched in your office. I I had an interesting experience where I got to school and I knew it was out because mm-hmm. I believe you texted me and said. It's, you made some, I saw you. I think I said something like, did you watch it yet? Yeah. I well, saw I'll your name on my phone and I purposely didn't yeah. read what you wrote. Cause I thought he's seen it. He's pumped. Mm-hmm. I got to wait. So I have this thing where I've got a certain amount of papers I need to grade each day. And I force myself to not watch it until I did all my grading. Cause I thought if I grade after I've seen it, I'm going to be too distracted. <laughs> so, and I got, you know, jobs got to come first. So I watched right, it. This point. I know I graded. I was talking to Tom in the school library, and he goes, "Have you seen it yet?" And I said, "No." <laughs> and he goes, "You want to watch it now?" And I go, mm. "And he kind of laughed and made a face." And my wife had fun teasing me about it because I went in my classroom and I closed the door and turned on the speakers and I watched it by myself for the first time because I just sort of, sort of wanted to soak it in. And I also did something that I've never done before, and that was because of the Star Wars show. Yeah, and I recorded my reactions to it and I put it on our coffee with Kenobi YouTube page in the hopes that it'll be on the Star Wars show next week. We'll see if that happens. And it was weird watching it for the first time while I'm filming myself because mm. I was very aware that I was aware of my reactions. Sure. Sure. So it, it so it was almost like it was it wasn't that it was disingenuous, but you is you know what I mean, let's be honest. I mean, in these reactions oh, absolutely. Things, people will ham it up a little. I mean, maybe mm-hmm. they don't, but I'm just not the kind of guy that will scream and hold my hands in the air. And I think it's super fun, and I love when people do that. But for me, I just kind of have this 
dumbfounded mouth agape look of like, <laughs> hey, I could be a goldfish. You know what I mean? That's right. Well, it's funny you said that to me, and I, I agree with and that you sentiment. Wept. You were so proud I, of it. I, yeah, it was it was wonderful acting. And no, I'm sorry. Um, uh, it's it's one of those things that I think captures a little bit of fandom. But I like you like you said, you you feel like you're, you know, in the moment, and you. you you try to act natural or try to like, this is what I would do if I was naturally watching this without a camera on me, know it, not knowing that, you know, that obviously it's almost like you want someone to, sh- to film you without knowing you're filming, being filmed and have your, or, you know, natural reaction come out or whatnot. And then and I didn't, I didn't think like, Oh, he's just pretending to, to be excited or say, wow, or whatnot. But I, I feel like generally that was how you would react. I mean, it is. I kind of found myself yeah, again, it like was you real. said, mouth agape. And it was kind of like at the end, I realized my mouth was open. Like, Oh, I was astonished about you know, this trailer in its essence, and I, I thought to myself, oh, this is interesting that I'm in this this feeling of like awe, you know, this this feeling of like um, I'm just blown away, just, just something brilliant. You just saw something brilliant. Interesting, brilliant meaning my reaction. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm at the trailer. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Well, let's let's actually we've we've spoken for um, a significant decent amount of time. And hopefully people are still listening to the show. Thank you again, everyone, for being here. Of course, we are Coffee with Kenobi, and we're pumped to talk about this. It is the third trailer. We had the teaser. We had the first official one not too long ago. And then we've got this one. And just your overall thoughts. And and I guess I'm sort of interested in how you weigh this one compared to the other two. But we'll save that for the end. So overall, just immediate overall thoughts. Okay, so immediate overall, I mean... I. Like again, I was going in with this thing, like, oh, this will be just stuff we've already seen. I felt like I, that was a, most of it was everything I had not seen. It was almost like I had to compare it to the other ones, but it it felt something. It felt fresh to me. Yeah. Um, it felt fresh um, right away. I was the music captured me. I was drawn into the story, the characters. I mean, I, I've always so kind of got to know these characters a little bit. We've been hunting out on Force Friday, seeing these characters, see them, you know, in articles and such with some of the actors, you know, talking about their character and whatnot. And it's becoming in, filtered into our mainstream, you know, process. As we grow close to this film. So just like episode seven, you know, these all brand new characters to us in essence. And it's fun to, to see them, you know, learn a bit more about them and see what's going on. And so this, this the shift we can see a couple of new characters uh some of the characters we've seen already you know seeing some different lines i i was just i was really excited and i felt like uh there was just things that i, I didn't expect and things that got me you know drew some mystery into it um and just the overall excitement of you know like like the trailer says it's hope or or uh, you know intri- intrigue and and i don't know it, it just i felt like this is a star Wars film. And I, I, like you mentioned previously, this film is different because it doesn't have that lineage of the classic films. Uh, and it's kind of, it's kind of an offshoot thing and an experiment of sorts. But I felt like this stamped it to me. This trailer said, this is star Wars and kind of raised all my other doubts of it being, you know, somewhat of a knockoff or in that essence. I like that this is Star Wars. I, I, I still kind of feel the same way I I did before. Like, this is Star Wars, but it's just not Star Wars. And that's mm-hmm. so refreshing and wonderful. Overall thoughts for me is I I was stunned. I think this one maybe moved me the most, uh, yeah. overwhelmed me perhaps. And not in an emotional way, but more of like an intellectual way. I, I basically, from the start to the end, it was just like looking at a, an art book i mean i mean you Hmm. you see in this why gareth edwards was hired and we haven't seen the movie of course but you see it i mean it's right there in front of you every i mean the opening scene with that ship i i think that's krennic's shuttle based on what we saw on force friday or rogue Mm. friday or whatever they're calling it that that looks like krennic's ship based on the lego version of it and over like this beach and you know all these images of the ships flying, the spaceships flying, or the way the stormtrooper armor just looks so brand new mm-hmm. even for for a design from the late seventies. There's just there's just a lot of stunning imagery. I I tweeted to Anthony Bresnik and he was talking about it because he you know he covers all this, and I'm sure he's seen it before we did. And 
it's art. It's it's absolute art in in a very non cinematic way. You know what I mean? Like I mean, there's an art mm-hmm. book that Lucas has from the films, the original trilogy, and the prequels, and, and it's great, and I really enjoyed it. It's called Frames, but this this just looks like something I would see in a museum. And you're the artist. What do you think? Yeah, I was going to say too. Some of the shots are those long, drawn out shots that we, you know, see landscapes and we see overhead shots. We saw a lot of this too with the earlier trailers as well. But like this really uh, puts this on display. You know, these 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 characters, uh, you know, off in you know, these moments, um, looking distantly off into the sunset or uh, a, um, a horizon line. Um, and it just, it, the shots are beautiful. Like you said, um, the scenery is wonderful. The, la- the landscapes are, 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 interesting. You know, these are some of the landscapes we haven't necessarily seen in other Star Wars films, new planets. Um, like I said, we see, we get new stormtrooper armor. We get, and everything looks really, it looks very, uh, to me, original trilogy episode four. Um, they, they capture that really well in essence. I really felt like I was put back on that time on that era and, and without being, you know, obviously it has the shine of, of the, you know, current technology of film, but I also felt like I was still placed in that story time, um, of a small rebellion, uh, looking to take on a mission. And it, it definitely encapsulates that why the shots that we're shown. Interesting. There's something pretty fresh about it too, that we've talked and it's, it's unlike anything I've seen in Star Wars. I would say we need to do this. Let's do our top, let's do a top five again. I, I sent okay. you a link in our Skype chat, and okay. hopefully you've seen it. And it's Jedi News has a frame by frame breakdown, so it's basically the entire thing through stills. Mm-hmm. Oh, so gotcha. that'll sure, help. Sure. That'll help refresh your memory. Okay. But, sort of, but to kind of tell me, if you will, let's let's go top five, not in any particular order, but go ahead. Sure. You want to start with my top five of of my personal, or the from the frames here. No, no, just that the frames are purely just to spark your memory. And we'll, oh, gotcha. we'll put the frames in the show notes. So yeah, I, I wrote down so I wrote down some some, um, some different thoughts. I, I had it. We then I watched it just previously to this recording uh, together um, for both of our third time, and uh, I wrote down some notes as I was watching it for the third time here. And, and the first one that stood out to me, I'm just, I, I really enjoyed the music. It, it was kind of very sweeping, uh, very kind of energetic. Uh, something that wasn't necessarily very Star Wars-y uh, or John Williams-esque, um, which was kind of nice to me. I felt like this is a different tone. This is a different mood. Uh, like we said, again, this isn't necessarily a Star Wars saga film. Uh, this is more, like they say, it's a Star Wars story. It's telling another story in, the, in this this grand landscape of of, um, uh, of Star Wars. And it's interesting, the music, how they would – kind of put that in and use that that way and i really enjoyed it that that much uh throughout the entire trier trailer the music is stunning and you know since there's been so much of a a sweeping change with who the composer is and mm-hmm. yeah. all that kind of stuff uh it, it definitely struck me that's the thing that always i mean this is a beautiful blending of of music and and image to create magic it's it's cinematic. It's beautiful. It, this might be one of my favorite Star Wars trailers of all time. And oh. I don't know why. It just actually I do know why. I'll just start with my my, my <laughs> no. first one. I think it's just the opening shot. Mm-hmm. And just because, and I'm looking at it right now, right here. But it's just it's just like it's just like unlike anything we've ever seen. There's that there's like a cloudy streak in the sky. It almost looks like a cloud racetrack from Mario, Super Mario Kart. <laughs> um, but then it's got, it looks like um, Krennic's shuttle, and the sky is bluish, and it's it's beautiful and full of hope, but you know that there's some danger afoot because the Empire is, is just so oppressive and omnipresent. And I want to give a shout-out to the Star Wars show because Justin it was talking about how in every shot where there's the Empire, people are always looking up at the Empire. The Empire is looking down at the people. It just creates mm. this incredible atmosphere that you are suffocated by them because they're everywhere. Wow. And you see that, yeah. you know, in the Kanan comic. You see that in the new Ahsoka novel. You see it in a lot of different places, but it's really captured quite, quite beautifully. So just that opening sequence, it really set the tone for me that this was something fresh. And, and I'll steal and I'll make this my 1A. But the next shot is um, 
I, I assume that's gin on it. What looks like almost like a sort of a a mirrored shot of Luke, you know, on the Lars mm-hmm. homestead, staring up at the twin sons. Is that is that gin? Uh, it's not gin. It's her. I, it's her father. That's her. Oh, you're right. It is. I just zoomed in on. Yeah. And if you look, if you look the, on brother, the there's, there's Krennic's ship, and the, and the yeah. looks like the white. I can see the white cape, way back in there. But I appreciate the the juxtaposition of that, the comparison mm-hmm. of Luke and Hope. Um, and goodness, and then there's there's Jin's father, and it's dark and cloudy and metaphorical, and you see evil in the distance instead of twin sons indicating hope. And, and this guy, you know, Mickelson, he appears to be somewhat uh, neutral good, if we can borrow a Dungeons and Dragons term. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Uh, and I saw people are saying there's a lot of spoilers in this trailer. Well, maybe I'm, I don't know, I don't see spoilers. I, I don't know what, I mean, we already knew I, that her father they were estranged that he was helping with the Death Star and he didn't necessarily want to. And that's kind of the impression we've gotten. And I think this trailer kind of delivers on that. So I just kind of stole like 10 things there for, for my first one, but (laughs) you go right ahead. Yeah, sure. I mean, the next thing that kind of came up to me was uh, again, these, these sweeping landscapes, but one that really stuck out, I think a lot of people have been talking about it too, is that overhead shot of the statue, the fallen statue of the Jedi Knight. Uh, And I got to say, I mean, I'm taking a second look at it here at the, through these, these screen captures. Um, it looks awful lot like Obi-Wan Kenobi. I mean, I, but I, mean, I don't know who that is. Obviously, it could be anybody. Um, but I'd like to believe it's Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, you know, obviously, he's a favorite character of, of ours. And, and you know, it's cool to see that because it really harkens back to the prequels um, and makes me realize a lot of things. Like we said, this isn't necessarily a Star Wars saga story our Skywalker centric story, but still it lives in this, this, this time frame of, of, you know, we know oh. that the Jedi Knights have fallen and it, it just really, it really makes a nice touching point on, yeah, we're not necessarily a Star Wars saga, but we're also, um, not forgetting where we came from our roots type thing. Um, I, I really, I think that's a really nice shot. It's, it says a lot. Well, I'm zooming in on these stills now and, and on the star show mm-hmm. Leland, she was talking about this, because I first thought that was just some cool rock landscape structure. Uh-huh. Every time I watch it, but now that I'm looking at this still, yeah, it looks like it's a mindscape thing. Yeah, you can see yeah, the hand, the yeah. lightsaber. Yeah, the absolutely, and they, and that's confirmed by Leland Chi. It's a lightsaber and a statue, mm-hmm. and there's the hood there. I mean, I don't know why there would be a statue of Obi Wan Kenobi. He's a uh, legendary Jedi Knight, of course. Well, yeah, but they're trying to exterminate the very idea of the Jedi. You know. Your sad devotion to that ancient religion does not help you conjure up those stolen data tapes, you know, right from mm. uh, from from Star Wars: New Hope, from from Admiral Mahdi and Vader talking and Tarkin. So they are trying to eradicate it, and yes, it is showing that metaphorically again that the even nature is starting to sweep away the existence of the Jedi. We know there are no Jedi in this. So right. that's right. that's so is that your number two? Just that image? That's my number two. Yeah. Well, just that imagery and, and that story that image tells. You know, like you said, there's no Jedi in this, but there kind of is. I mean, in the back of your mind, you kind of really remember that, like this is what kind of went down, the Order sixty six, mm-hmm. and there's this is a troubling time. There's there's no hope and and they're just looking to get by and and, and you know, live out their lives and, and hopefully, you know, do what they can. And then this tells me like there was other times before this and obviously the prequels tell a whole different story too. I mean, but it's, it's, it's just really cool to tie all that in. There's, there's, I'm going to use, I'm going to take that one as well because it's, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's just cool that there's mystery and intrigue there and it's, and it's, it's not really subtle, but it's just so quick that if you didn't have the internet, you really wouldn't probably have caught it. I wouldn't think unless you're incredibly astute. I caught it. Yeah, well, no, I caw it. Yeah, I saw. It. Well, I saw it. I saw it. I watched it twice uh, this morning, and I saw it the second time. I kind of realized, oh, it looks like hands, and I realized, oh, that looks like a lightsaber, and then it kind of clicked to me that it looked like a roped figure. So, I didn't realize it was that close in on the actual image. I thought it was zoomed out way further, but no. Now that I look at it, for sure, I guess it's your turn for the third one. Even though we pretty much both had the second one, is the same. <laughs> I feel like mine are going to be very similar to my reactions to the first full trailer, but maybe not. Well, yeah, it's, I mean, like you said, you know, we, we've seen some other things, some of their previous trailers, and again, something that stuck out to me was a lot of the one one liners um, that some of the characters had. Um, just, uh, I'll, I'll kind of name a couple that I enjoyed. Was I, I liked hearing Krennic speak. We hadn't heard, heard him speak yet, 
Um, and I don't remember what he said off the top of my head, but it was um, something, you know, it sounded like he was in control of, of a situation of sorts. Um, but the one that stood out to me the most, which and this character is really coming to his own for me. Uh, it was, it was, um, true it. I'm and I'm, I'm probably saying Chirrut that wrong. Mwing? Yeah. You like him. Don't you? you know, I really, he's a really cool character because I, he's unique in the sense that he's not a Jedi, but yet he still follows the force, the ways of the force or trust the force. And his, his, his line is take hold of this moment. The force is strong. And man, I just, I gave me goosebumps and this whole trailer gave me goosebumps. And just hearing that, I was just like, take hold of this moment. Like he's not giving up. He's going to fight till the bitter end. And I was just like, man, this, this, this guy, this guy gets it. You know, uh, maybe some other folks might, you know, that he's along with my doubt, you know, what's going on in their situation or what kind of odds they're up against. And this guy, even though he's blind, he is, is grasping, you know, and holding on to the force, uh, and fighting, fighting through it. So I think that was a great line, uh, and from a great character. See, I'm, I'm undecided in, on him. I mean, I know we're clearly supposed to like him. He's clearly supposed to be the resident power. You know what I mean? Like he, there's no Jedi, but he seems to be the closest to it in this film. Sure. Just based on sure. the, again, the select knowledge that we actually have. But I don't know. He, I'm just sort of ambivalent to him right now. I, I mean, hmm. I, I don't know. I, I feel like he's not, I don't know. There's just something about him that isn't clicking for me. Like he, he really? feels like they all feel like Star Wars characters. When he does things and the way he speaks and his dialogue, I feel like he's an actor. Mm-hmm. Like really, yeah, he, I'm just not buying into what he's selling, and that's completely unfair because I haven't seen the film, and the guy is an excellent actor. I mean, his body of work is 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 pretty impressive, but I don't know, just maybe the way that he's being framed in this trailer is just not working for me. I don't really know why. That's interesting, huh? So. Yeah, I'm interested to see what others think as well. My my third one is Vader. I'm not going to wait ah. to prolong it to the end. <laughs> I wondered. Yeah. Well, gosh. I mean, it's I I spent more time than I should have trying to freeze that image, and I put it on our our post when I was encouraging our coffee with Kenobi family to weigh in on the trailer. Sure. And it's just it's so gorgeous. I mean, he's walking in. No, he's not smoke, he's and he's rushed. he's oh well, yeah, he's you know he's it's almost like a gate. He's just kind of, uh, kind of a it's quick like, gate as he's hopping through, not hopping, but he's just he's, he's stalking. He's, he's determined. He's, he's determined. Yeah, he's he's gonna get what he. He's is intimidating there to do. as heck. I mean, he, excellent. Yeah, it's super yeah. super scary, and it looks it looks like they're calling back to, you know, the Cloud City, the Bespin. Yeah, um, that's exactly what I got from the, you know from that carbonite. The carbon freeze chamber, that's what yeah. it feels like in the way that thing is lit where everything is white. There's a little bit of gray, and I'm assuming he's walking towards towards your boy. Uh, <laughs> but it's tricky because the next scene is where it looks like Jen's father, Maz Mickelson, is um, not in a good place. So mm-hmm. I, don't, I can't tell if Vader's in that scene or not. I don't think that he is, but that's just good editing, Vader looks so <laughs> impressive and intimidating. And the fact that this design from the late 70s can still give you chills or, mm-hmm. you know, inspire you to, and actually make you a little bit afraid when you're a, when you're, when I'm a, I'm a grown man, you know, I got a family and kids and, <laughs> and, and it's just like, whoa, that is intimidating. Like in all, and it hits the note in all the right ways. And here's something crazy. I tweeted out something about how that image. And I mentioned the fact that, boy, I never thought I'd see this. It's incredible. I got more hits and retweets and comments on that particular tweet than anything I've tweeted in my entire life. Wow. Even that's more than a, the commercial. Impressive. Yeah. Huh. And it just And I think it's just because I tagged Rogue One and put an image of Vader. I mean, honestly, hmm. what, it's not like I was saying anything groundbreaking, but but it's moving people. And he's so, again, he's such a force of nature. Vader is a force of nature that that's all you need. I mean, honestly, this trailer would have been incredible without it, but just tossing him in there just gives that glimpse to people like, Oh my gosh, Darth Vader is in this thing. I'm, I <laughs> I can't miss it. So clearly, that's that's the third one. I mean, probably if I was ranking them in order, it probably would be number one. No, mm-hmm. well, it'd be one A. I know what the other one would be. So gotcha. Yeah, just to tag on my thoughts on that scene. I, I, like you said, he's he's definitely determined. Um, but I also like the fact that he doesn't speak. 
Um, and that's not spoiled there. We oh, talk same. about their spoilers mm-hmm. and what's not there. I mean, there are little hits and bits right there, but it gets you, I think it's more of like mystery and intrigue versus really spoiling something. Like, obviously it's a shot of Vader, but, and also, like you said, he's, he's a force we reckon with. He's, he's, he embodies the star Wars, you know, saga. And again, like it's not a star Wars story or it's not a Skywalker story. I think I'm, I feel like I'm repeating myself a million times, but it, you know, he's still attached to the goings on of, the universe, uh, the galaxy there. Oh yeah. And, He's uh, pin, like you said, and we see him in rebels in this almost the same exact way. And when he enters the scene, he just, he's there and he just chews it up and he's, it's all about him. So it's, it's definitely, he's definitely a scene stealer. And I was a great moment. I thought for the, this trailer you, and you can't, yeah, that's, I mean, you, you can't look away. I wouldn't say that you're repeating yourself it's more because there's, again, we keep hitting on these themes that are important mm-hmm. and they're just right there. They're in your face. And for all the right reasons, Sure. You can't have Vader on too much because, like, just like you said so well, he's such a presence that he eats up everything. Like, mm. you can't not focus on him. He doesn't blend in. Right. You know what I mean? If he was at a cocktail party, everyone would know where he was. <laughs> and not just because of the breathing. He's he's so, he's such an incredible thing. And I love that he didn't talk. I know you, did, you said yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Because I want the first time I hear James Earl Jones's dialogue and... and bombastic voice through through the lens of vader i want to have those chills in the movie theater mm, me too you know? exactly that, and that's the thing that's, too it's that's like what that, we, that's, that's what we deserve i mean i don't know if that's exactly fair. and they've done a good job of, of marketing that that way knowing that they've got a lot more in store for us so it's exciting to see that my fourth thing and i i think we've talked about this before um previously that we hadn't seen x-wings necessarily mm. up to this point and as we go through this kind of montage of of action sequences, Jen speaking and she's talking about hope and bringing forces together and we'll never stop fighting. And there's this scene of X-Wings flying off in, in, in battle. And I was like, Oh, that's so refreshing to see that. That's so cool that we'll see some X-Wing battles and, and hopefully some great action and explosions and, and whatnot. But, uh, I, I guess I'd kind of forgotten that we have, you know, X-Wing pilots that, and, and a fleet that are, you know, somewhat of a ragtag team, but they're there and they exist and, and who knows how they'll interact with with the movie and the the goings on of the of the mission? But uh, it, it was really cool to see that. I know it's one of your favorite things out of the Star Wars universe is the X wings, and it got me excited to see those. And so it was a moment that I was like, "Oh, Dan will really like this." <laughs> That's interesting because it's not really that it is one. X wings hit me in a profound way when I put on that outfit for the commercial. That's when it really. Okay. But before that, I've always, I've always liked X wings. But it's not like I've ever gravitated towards them. Hmm. But but again, wearing that, it's impossible not to. If you're wearing that on a green screen for something Star Wars, it's impossible not to be like, I'm in love. You know what I mean? That's right. <laughs> but I love that scene too. And I and it was sort of on the on the cusp of if I was going to include it in this list or not, but I'll just address what you were saying. It almost seems like that's like a different angle of the original attack on the Death Star from A New Hope. Hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, that's, I never thought about that. That's way. what I. That's what I thought. Is that what they're doing, or was there a pre-attack? Sure, Which seems sort of strategically not as solvent, but I don't know. Again, hmm. we'll find out in, in, De- in December sixteenth. But I like that too, and the imagery. It, they keep doing this incredible job of showing us these familiar images and ideas and and battles and. It feels new and old at the same time. That's hard to do and to make it genuine. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. that one of the hangups that some had on the prequels was that, well, this is set way before the original trilogy, but it all looks way newer and more advanced. And that, that's never, I mean, I totally get that. It's mm-hmm. somewhat anachronistic, but it's really not because I buy into the notion that the emperor and the empire just sort of took everything. They're right. Like, they're like, bioorganic locusts and they go through and they take everything from the Zare novels that Jason Fry wrote or from the Ahsoka novel, the Empire goes on planets and they suck it dry like parasites. Yeah. So that makes sense they would suck up the technology as well. No, right. It does. I mean, they take what they want and they, they leave nothing. So it's definitely, I mean, we see that all over the place in the, you know, the after order 66 and pre episode four and, even episode, you know, we see it throughout the original trilogy of them just having un, almost unlimited resources 
Um, and like you said, they had, the reason they had to get that was just to, just to take it, take the technology. And obviously, we see this we kind of see like the interesting aspect. You said that I, it makes me think of like this whole this whole storyline we that we're seeing here in this trailer that they're obviously getting what they want. They're obviously getting Jin's father to help them. Uh, that was revealed obviously to build a master uh, space station to, like you said, just to take what they want and own the galaxy. And this was their next steps doing to that just that so uh yeah i i, I think that's definitely I, I, if it's a, a run on if the x-wings are a run on the death star are if that's in conjunction to like a pre-run i i, I don't know finding weak spots or so, i i don't know it's interesting to kind of think about that when I, when I look at some of these images from a jedi news i'm not i'm not as convinced of that now uh there's definitely something that's they're okay. attacking in space but the x-wings they definitely look older i mean like they did in Star Wars. To me, it's Star Wars, and that X-wing looks like Star Wars. The I've sort of been again the the Resistance's X-wing models, especially Poe's black and orange one. Yeah, I like that design so much more, just because it's just so crisp, and I like the why well, the S foils open up. But that one's pretty stunning. So I'll move on to my next one. We're but we're babbling more than we usually do. <laughs> we're excited. We okay. are excited. We're excited. My my next one is. That gorgeous image. They're making the Death Star like mm-hmm. enchanting, and, and it shouldn't be. It's a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> but that image of it, sort of in the clouds, and mm-hmm. almost looks like a mirage, and it's it's creeping up on the atmosphere. It's just so chilling and beautiful. And this is again, this is this is the art that Gareth Edwards and the and the director of photography are bringing to this picture. It's just it's just a wonderful image, and it's almost like. We're here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're 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 beautiful and and enthralling because of the technology. You know, as Krennic says, the power, and he and he squeezes mm. his mm. hand together, which I'm sure a lot of people. Yeah, are. they're really doing something special, something something extraordinary. We said all along, even the we've seen some of these posters come out, and the Death Star is definitely a major figure. Uh, looming, loom, very always looming uh, over our our heroes and our small band of of folks, mission takers, and yeah, it, it's 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 cool because it's like that's that's what this whole story is about, right? So it's it's interesting that way that it's this imposing force, like you said earlier, it's it's shining down, always shining down on us, and, and kind of making us claustrophobic. Well said. For my last thing, uh, number five, and I, I we could go on forever. I think as far as favorite things there's so many things i'm thinking about just looking through these images but uh, overall i i just really i'm starting to enjoy these characters i think i, I felt the most about all this was these characters are becoming star wars characters in my mind I'm, I'm getting to know them getting to enjoy them on the screen um but i, I think overall we have so many different diversity type characters uh, in this film uh there's robots and men and women and uh, different backgrounds, characters. We have characters who are powerful, people, characters who seem they're possibly you know a little weaker and need help, uh, and, and just across, all across the board. And it just shows me that you know that those who bind together can work together to for the greater good. Uh, and and that's inspiring. I mean, we, they talk about you know looking for a hope or you know achieving hope. And obviously, it's a, it's a callback, like you said, to A New Hope, Episode 4. And it's interesting that, you know, that, that that's what they have to cling on uh, to be able to grasp and carry them through battle and carry them onto their mission. And these characters are fresh. I think they're all interesting looking. Uh, we have different, you know, accents. We have uh, different languages and such. And just a whole host of, you know, brand new characters we get to be, kind of get to dive into uh, and enjoy. Interesting, and, and I like how you said the word Klingon, and it sounded like you're talking about Star Trek. <laughs> you know, when I said that, I kind of thought that's why that sounds like a Star Trek thing. Yeah, but no, clinging, I, clinging on to hope. Yes, clinging on to hope. Yes, <laughs> they, there's a lot of optimism in the darkness through this thing. Yes, which I enjoy. Mm-hmm. My last one is the Im- There are two times in the trailer where where Krennic is is face to face with mm. with Jenner, so his father, and they both speak loudly. One is when Jen is a, is a young young lady, and when is when they're older, and it's raining, and he's you know, Krennic has come off the shuttle, 
and Mickelson is waiting for him and he's just he he's just such a great actor. And you know, I whenever I see him I think of Casino Royale. I know he's yeah made quite a splash in, in um the T V show Hannibal. But he just he just looks like I'm I'm really drawn to him. He's he's almost become the most interesting character to me in this film. Wow. Just because of this trailer. And I mean he's such a, again, he's such a good actor. So I don't know. Krennic, is Krennic, do you still love Krennic as much as you did before? You know, yeah, hearing him speak makes me intrigued about him. And in some of the scenes we've seen him in, in this trailer, I, I, I kind of, I won't say lost my luster, but I felt like, oh, he has a, a side of him that maybe seems like weak or mm-hmm. um, it says his look in his eyes, he's, he's looking to try to be the power, take hold of uh, the forces he's looking to command. And maybe that doesn't always happen great for him. Maybe he's not as powerful as he thinks he wants to be, or I, I don't know. I, it's hard to to say because I don't I don't know. I've only seen him a handful of times, and and you mentioned you know um, Jin's father, and this is the first time we see him on the screen uh, and saying a few lines. And it's interesting, you're so drawn to him, uh, and it, it obviously plays on you know a father and a daughter's relationship, which is interesting in these times of war, uh, and it's it's. Like I said, there's a lot of there's a lot of darkness and sadness to even this trailer. That the rain obviously is signifying tears in a sense of of lostness and uh, you know un- unfairness almost to the fact that empire is so strong. We spoke about earlier, and it's interesting to think about that. You know, is there hope, uh, or are we just kind of just fighting for nothing here and just you know spinning our gears? And is he is he falling to the dark side? Or the dark side is he falling to the empire in a sense of like that's his last resort to to protect his loved ones so there's so many things dynamic things going on here and and they like I said they captured it in such a great way in the rain uh and and being able to express that through film the the first time we saw him in the original teaser trailer i was intrigued mm-hmm. by him and yes he's got his cape and all this yeah and, and he just looked i just like the visuals of him mm-hmm. and the second trailer i'm like okay that's fine and this one, he just feels like a cartoon character. Wow. He just seems, and that's very, that's very critical, isn't it? And I don't mean that to be negative. No, I, I know. But, I think it's critical, but it's interesting that you, you see as somebody, we brought up a couple of characters here and you've just seen them as, you know, it's kind of cardboard cutouts a little bit. And He's not a cardboard just, cutout. He just seems, this is the thing about Rogue One for uh-huh. me. It it's, it's doesn't feel like Star Wars. It does feel like hmm. Band of Brothers the Star Wars version. It does very much feel like that to me. And when I see him, he feels like a a villain from a from a popcorn movie. Hmm. Like just, a moo ha villain. Yeah, yeah. Just sort of like I'm bad, I'm evil, I'm I'm not really realistic. Not a threat? No, no he's a threat, but he's just okay. not he doesn't feel like he could here's the thing. I feel like I could take Jen or so or her father you know, or, or some of these other characters and I could take them out of a rogue one and put them in a world war two movie and they would fit perfectly mm-hmm. and it wouldn't, you wouldn't miss a beat. But when I look at him, he just seems like someone from a sci-fi popcorn flick. And mm-hmm. and I don't mean that to be negative. I'm just saying based on that image alone, he's not hitting me in, in the way that, that Mads Mikkelsen is. And and it's not really so much of a knock against Krennic as it is, I'm again I'm so intrigued by this Mickelson character. I not, must not be that intrigued because I keep referring to him as the actor and not his actual <laughs> character, character, character name. name. I don't know. I don't know. Does, does but, any of that make sense? Yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting take. I will say. I mean, it makes me think about Mickelson's character a lot. I I don't know much about him. I don't know what the stakes are in the essence of what we've seen so far. And there's a lot, there's like I said, we've, there's a lot of mystery intrigue going on here. There's a lot of, uh, and we, they're not spoilers. They're not they're, I, I feel like they're just, they're little, you know, light taps, if you will, saying here's where we're, here's what we're moving towards and uh, getting people and fans and, and, and friends excited about this. But uh, it, it doesn't tell me a whole lot, but it gets me excited to hear you speak about this because it does like, Oh yeah, I wonder what his deal is or, you know, why do you think he's more popular than, or in your in your eyes, why is he more popular than um, the Empire's figure or the Empire in general? And some of these other characters that I feel more drawn towards. It's it's interesting because, like I said earlier, like my, one of my favorite things about this is the diversity that 
fans and, and viewers can go and watch this and, and pick out their favorite character and say, I relate to this character the most, or I enjoy this character the most because of, you know, the line they said, or a cool action sequence. Oh, he was so cool because I relate to him. Like we've talked about, I, I like K2SO because I think he's just unique. I like the way he looks, he, um, uh, the way he, he is, um, on screen. And maybe I won't, I won't be the same. You know, I'm interested to see how we will report on this too, after that we see the film yeah. and come away with, obviously uh, seeing, you know, all this, all the characters on the screen, um, and seeing how we like them, uh, from, from now. So it's, it's, it's so interesting to, to take your take and, and, and see what, uh, how you thought that. And it's, I don't, I, I wouldn't, like I said, I want to, I don't want to think that it's negative, a negative take, not at all by any means. No. I think it's a critical take by any, by just by a fan and just by a, you know, a short trailer. Right. Exactly. So, no, it's so, well done. Well said. Before, well, thank you. And before we wrap this up, uh, we did post something on our, on our website and on Twitter mm-hmm. and on Facebook where we wanted people to share their thoughts their immediate thoughts on the trailer. And, and as promised, we're going to incorporate them into our conversation. So we'll go with the first one from Andre H. And he wrote, the feeling that these Rogue One trailers have instilled in me is something different, something new. There is a serious sense of urgency and peril. The mm. rebel situation is dangerous. And the trailer made me feel that desperation. You get a sense of the full, awful power of the empire. They look ruthless and without mercy. This is a different kind of Star Wars, and I couldn't be more excited for December 16th to come. Well, it's like you're reading my mind, Andre. I, <laughs> I agree. It's just so different and and so oppressive and in a very gritty, non-science fiction universe sort of a way, or I should say non-science fantasy sort of a way. And it's it's compelling in a way that, that sort of challenges your preconceived notions of what a Star Wars film is. Yeah, Andre does a great job of having that sense of, of urgency and, and peril. Um you know, like you said, the trailer does have this. I mean, there's there's this essence of like, will they fulfill their mission? Will they, you know, get along? Will they be able to just do as they're instructed and, and not wane from that path or, or you know, back down? And I, I think the trailer does a great job of showing that. And Andrea hits right on the head there. So very well done. And you you agree too? There's there's that sense of urgency and mm-hmm. the rebels are they're desperate and it's it's amazing. I honestly almost wish there wasn't as much. A story about the Empire before Rogue One because hmm. I feel like I've already got a good sense of them with Lost Stars and and again the Ahsoka novel and in the mm-hmm. Canon comic and the Zare books. <laughs> the Zare Leonis man all the way. There you go. So I don't know, but it definitely is consistent with what we have seen and, and it, again so gritty and crisp and I love it. So let's go on to Jason's Jason Hall. Patreon contributor. Thank you again, Jason. And he writes, Morta Jin's story was revealed, opening up the door as to why she is vested in this mission. And the scene with Galen and Jin was very moving for me. Seems as though he, Galen Urso, was given a choice. Help the Empire or else. The father-daughter story underlying the movie is most interesting to me. What would you do to protect the people you love? I could be way off there, but that's what I took from the trailer. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's what we talked about kind of earlier, right? I mean, we kind of, we kind of draw, drew from that scene as well, this, this father-daughter relationship. And you brought it up that Galen, Galen Urso is, is uh, his name there. Um, that was a really interesting take. And uh, again, uh, not knowing a whole lot, again, this trailer has really opened my eyes to what the story can be, uh, aside from just, like I say, a mission-based story. And uh, there's, there's, there's deeper threads here. Um, pulling on these characters. So, um, yeah, it's it's cool to, that every viewer gets to see something a little bit different. Yeah, and, it's, it de- and I agree with Jason. that It's definitely what is, is shown. It's definitely what the filmmakers mm-hmm. and the hype machine of Lucasfilm <laughs> want us to think. Yeah, exactly. Whether that's actually it. I feel like there will be twists in this thing, and I don't know where that will come from, but I feel like there's more to Galen Urso than, than meets the eye. And again, I, I don't know. I just... <laughs> There's something about me, there's something about him that just tells me this guy's going to be important, this guy's going to be compelling. I mean, if he's the one who helped create the Death Star, I mean, that's that's serious mm. stuff. You know what I mean? That's like yeah. creating a nuclear weapon. It's it's powerful. The power, Corey. The power. We're going to be probably hearing that forever and ever, aren't like we? Like a T-shirt, something a like t-shirt. that. Yep. The power. That's right. Mike DeRose... Uh, 
He's at Live the Force on Twitter. He's he's a great contributor online with our Coffee with Kenobi family as well. He has a little more to say, and he puts, I want to take a moment to acknowledge Riz Amid as Bodhi. We do not see much of his character, but what we do see is very telling. We need to keep in mind that this is not the same Star Wars as the prequels. Our main characters are not powerful warriors using the Force. There are no lightsabers to deflect blaster bolts with ease. What we have are normal beings who make the conscious choice to be brave and to do the right thing. The Jedi of the prequels were qualified and trained to be in battle. That is not the case with characters such as Bodhi. The look on Bodhi's face in the trailer when he is hiding behind a crate tells us so much about his character in only a fraction of a second. A testament to Riz Amid's acting abilities. Here's a man not comfortable in a firefight. He is scared, but more importantly, he is determined. He wants to do the right thing, even if it does not come naturally to him. We see in the next shot he is no longer hiding, but moving towards some unknown objective surrounded by the raging battle. Rogue One will hopefully be filled with characters whose leadership does not come easily, whose bravery is not first nature, but with characters who choose to do the right thing. Bodhi seems to be the first of hopefully many examples of this in the film. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, that is that's great. And it's a great emphasis on a character that we really haven't talked much about in any of these discussions. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, there's just that. I mean, I guess in every time we do see him, he does seem sort of like in way over his head, but he's mm. still fighting. You know what I mean? He's still standing up to oppression like we can't even imagine. And yeah, there's there's going to be a lot of powerful acting in this thing. I mean, do you think there? Do you foresee any acting awards to come out of this thing? I don't know about acting awards. I don't know if, know if it's that that established. As well, a, Sir, Sir Alec I don't know. was nominated for Best Supporting Actor for Star Wars. Look at you. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, I mean, as, as far as uh, Riz Ahmed, the actor, uh, as Bodhi, and, and seeing this character in this trailer, I mean, we really didn't mention him too much. And uh, one of my things I like were the, the one-liners. And one of them that – another one that stuck out, I kind of wrote down here, if I've been in quotes, this is Row One. And that's something that kind of bothered oh, that me the most cool. time. Yeah, about the, 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 the title of this film, Rogue One, I always thought, well, where did that come from? Where, how did they land on that? You know, And this kind of gives us that backstory. I think it's cool that, that almost he's – to me, it seems like he's making it up on on the fly. You know, And it, he, oh, he looks it. a little so bit you scared. Didn't like, you and, didn't like that, how they revealed the call sign? No, I did. I did like that. I liked yeah. the way that it was almost Same. like, well, what do we say? And he's like, I, I rogue one, you know, it's, it's, it's cool to see that and then reflect that back into the title of the film. Like it really heightens it for me. And I think it really, it, it seems uh, like it just says a lot, uh, for that character. Like, like, uh, like Mike said here for that character to be able to, to be maybe feeling a little more, you know, of a weaker character. And how, what am I fighting for? What can I do to contribute uh, to this mission and maybe he's doubting himself, but yet we see him contribute in a huge way. Uh, and maybe he's saving the bacon there a little bit, uh, in that, in that scene. Um, and, and like I said, it reflects such a great personification of the title of the film. Oh, nice. Well done. Did you say Thanks. bacon by the way? Saving bacon. Yep. Yeah. Has that ever been said in a Star Wars podcast? Not yet. That's exciting. Not. Well, this is it. I mean, this is when this go. is released, it's going to explode, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know what and, and um, Mike brings up something in what you said in response to his insight kind of triggers something in me where yeah this is about the little man mm-hmm. this isn't a, a farm boy turned greatest Jedi Knight of all time this isn't a a rogue charming smuggler who's got a heart mm-hmm. of gold and, and will will be a hero to the rebellion or or princess turned general who is one of the bravest fictional characters of all time. It's not them. It, these are just, you know, people in the trenches. Every man. Yeah, yeah, every just, man just, sort of stuff. Yeah. It's, I mean, it'll, yeah. There's a lot of diversity, too. They come from different backgrounds and, mm-hmm. and looking, they're being oppressed. And I, it's, there's so much, like like Mike said, there's so much going on here. And just he just keys on just to one character. And we only see a glimpse of that. And it's, it's really cool to see that. It's the... It's the it's the it's the small rising up. It's the David versus Goliath uh, feeling of you know fighting and, and, and raging back and, and and doing whatever you can to be able to to take on that giant and 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 you know hopefully make a dent. So well, yeah, I I have a feeling Corey it's going to be successful. <laughs> I hope so. Well, just go see Star Wars and you'll feel better. 
Oh, is that how it ends? Is I, that is. Is that a, does that count as a spoiler? No. Nah, no, 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 it doesn't. The film's almost forty years old, and you're listening to a Star Wars <laughs> podcast. It's not a spoiler. <laughs> so, any last minute thoughts before we uh, move on? We do have at the end of our program. Uh, we recorded a little bit for Force Friday, not not a ton because it was just a very different atmosphere than the original Force Friday for The Force Awakens. But we do have some things we want to share with you, and some of it is video or audio from our our Periscope. So that will be at the end of this podcast. But before we move along to that, any last-minute thoughts or comments on the second trailer of Rogue One? Yeah, I mean, again, I just want to establish that, you know, I, I, think, I feel like this is a Star Wars film in my eyes. Uh, as a fan of Star Wars, I, I feel like this it has it encapsulates Star Wars to me. And, and a lot of that comes with... We talked about you know Vader coming and having that presence and and just you know these seeing these characters kind of come alive again and seeing the new environments and new scenes and hearing them speak great lines and uh, the sweeping landscapes and such. But uh, one thing we hadn't necessarily talked about a lot and maybe we'll get to it maybe our next show. But uh, I'll hint it hint on here as they released the Star Wars Rogue One uh, poster uh, official poster. And it was pretty it was the day before the trailer. Um, and it, it encapsulated the trailer a lot to me. I go back and look at it. I think this is, looks a lot like the trailer. Uh, this is the, the second trailer we, we just watched. Um, has all, all the characters on there. Obviously there's an ominous, ominous Darth death star in the background. Vader's back there looming. Uh, and these larger than life characters, um, taking on uh, a big and bigger battle. So, uh, it's a great, it's a great looking, uh, poster. Um, again, it's got the, the island planet, uh, the stormtroopers at the bottom kind of doing their, their swimsuit issue type thing going on. They, the AT, AT, AT is going walking and, and we got tie fires and such and U wings. And, uh, there's a, it's just a great image. It's, it's really unique. Uh, and it's a lot about the film itself. Agreed. Yeah. We didn't talk about the poster that yesterday was quite a blockbuster day for announcements. <laughs> and we knew there was going to be a trailer. We saw the poster for rogue one, which I love. I love how, Vader is blends in kind of like that image I talked about before with the Death Star in, in the clouds, such 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 a mocking display of of typically looking in the clouds is supposed to bring mm-hmm. hope and peace, and this is the opposite of that, which is again metaphorical to what the Empire or oppression can do to to good people, to to people who don't really get a chance to decide their future, which is why freedom is obviously so critical in why history is full of us trying to find freedom in, in all walks of life, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. When did this become so didactic? Anyway, <laughs> I love the, the poster too. I like it much, much more than I expected. I would, the, the ones that were released a few weeks ago from overseas, those didn't mm-hmm. really do it for me as much, but this one is, is pretty, pretty great. Uh, Gary Whitta, who wrote Rogue One talked about how he can't imagine how, th- how he can't even explain how thrilling it is to see the images of this in mm-hmm. that poster and hey it's it's gonna look good on my wall that's all i can say about that so it was awesome. pretty great so if anyone else has any thoughts or comments on Rogue one go ahead and jump in on the on the web on coffee with kenobi.com we have a thread there ready for you or we're always happy to talk with you online and social media twitter and facebook and tumblr and not everywhere that coffee with kenobi can be found Anything else before we go on to our Force Friday coverage? Yeah, I will say this. Um, I really hope this is the end of um, the trailers and shots. I'm sure there'll probably be some TV so- shots and stuff mm, and that's what things like that. But, you know, I, I'm satisfied right now with where I'm at as a fan um, going into this film. I feel like I'm ready to see it. Uh, I know we're about a you know month and a half away, well, about two months away. Um and it, I'm comfortable. Uh, I, I really, I'm excited for the film. I'm, I'm, a, I, in a, I'm in a different place. I was a year ago, two years ago when this was announced and we started talking about it. I, I feel like I'm excited to see it. I want to see it on the opening day. Uh, I want to just dive into these characters and I, I don't want to be spoiled anything else. So like, like we did before, I, I'm going to try and stay clear of, of spoilers and, and kind of on the internet and stuff and kind of sidestepping and, Saving my own bacon, if you will, um, and being bacon able to there you go, being able to just kind of uh, stay stagnant a little bit uh, before I see the film. Exactly. I was sticking with the breakfast theme. Exactly. Wonderful. Go. Eggs that, and bacon. I'm actually hungry for eggs and bacon now. Delicious. Delicious. Well, that does go nice with coffee. 
I will say. <laughs> well said. I, you know what? I think well, let's make a pact. Who's going to join us on our pact? From now on, any images or, <laughs> or TV commercials, I'm not watching any of them. So I do believe there will be things that come out. I mean, not to spoil us. Obviously, we have the James Lucino book, uh, Star Wars Catalyst, as a, a kind of a, I want to think it's a prequel to the film. I'm excited for that. I'll read that. Um, obviously, more merchandising, more uh, action figures, and, uh, you know, with second wave of um, three and three quarters inches Black Series figures, our favorite, you know, pop, uh, vinyl pop figures that are coming out. So I think there's still things that are coming out that necessarily won't spoil us, but I think we'll be excited about to talk about. All right. Is it reasonable to uh, say that you and I are starting to be, get kind of the pop addiction? Is that reasonable? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm as big as our, our, our friend from um, Force Friday. No. That we're in line, no Toys no, R Us. He's, he's the master. Sure, yeah. He is the master. He showed, he showed us his wall of pop figures that were literally, I think, wall, like wallpaper, and it was incredible. But I do have a handful of ones I do enjoy, and I think I might go back out and, and hunt out some more. And just because I'm, I, I really like them, I think they're a unique thing, and and some that hits me as a fan that are are fun to collect and get to grab a hold of. Right on, I I agree, I love them too. So, and that's something I tried to resist, but it just didn't work. That's kind of what Star Wars <laughs> does, you know. Leland Chi recently said, "You can't ever imagine a time from now on where it won't be a great time to be a Star Wars fan." That's encouraging. <laughs> So, without further ado, thank you again so much for joining us for another cup of coffee. We will now head towards our Force Friday coverage. Han Solo, Rebel Soldier, Lando Calrissian, and Bespin Guard each sold separately from Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back Collection, new from Kenner. Looking? Found someone you have, I would say, hmm? Your lightsabers will make a fine addition to my collection. All right, welcome to another Force Friday. Dan Z and Corey Club here from Coffee with Kenobi with special correspondent Tom Gross. Say hello, everybody. Hello there. Hello. Hello. Good to see everybody. Yeah, we are in an interesting predicament here because the first store we went to was closed and there was no midnight opening. And then we called the other store in that area. And that was an opening there. So we're standing outside here of a different store, and there is a queue of two gentlemen outside. So we're going to venture in pretty soon. But before we do that, we sort of want to talk about kind of the excitement of Force Friday and what this sort of means for us. I'm going to hand it over to my good friend and co-host, Corey Club. Oh, that's quite the induction there. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's interesting because we talked about, like, the aspirations of, like, um, just getting up and driving uh, and finding a spot. And we were out last year, I remember, um, and we got right in uh, the first store and it was fun. There was excitement. There was, you know, they had those online releases as well. And uh, I was kind of getting everybody excited to see what's coming out in stores. So uh, this year was, we didn't have a lot of online um, openings or uh, reveals. So that was kind of interesting in the marketing wise. Uh, they have had an excellent commercial uh, featuring our our one and only Dan's there, so uh, that's quite special. And um, so it's interesting. The, the, the mood is a little bit different uh, for me. Yeah. Tom, what about you? Well, I, I had tweeted earlier today that uh, this is something that reminds me of, you know, I was preparing to be a uh, kid again. And uh, this is what, you know, when you're a kid, when you're, you know, nine, 10, 11 years old and new toys are coming out. You didn't get to participate in stuff like this. So this is like being a kid at an older age. I won't say how old our ages are, but we're, we're big kids now. And so it's, it's exciting to see the new, um, the new figures, the new ships. Um, even though you're right, Corey, there's been a lot more release of the toys, uh, visually. We, we know, we kind of know what to expect, I think, but I'm I'm just waiting for some surprises. I don't know if there will be some, but that's what I'm waiting for. Well, we actually had quite a nice surprise a few hours ago when I got home from school. There was um, everybody was home and everybody was chatting up, and then my three year old came in and said, "Daddy, I want to show you this box." And I said, "Okay, okay, hon, I'll be right there." And he said, "I think it's a Star Wars box, Daddy." So I thought, "Ooh, Force Friday, what happened? What happened?" So. We went into my room, and there was a huge box, bigger than my three-year-old. We opened it up and had a ton of 
Rogue One merchandise, which we're going to put a link to in the show. So it was amazing. Thank you so much, Hasbro, for your generosity. We're definitely uh, going to have a lot of fun with that. What, what are some of the things that, that you got out of, the, out of that swag, Mr. Club? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I was interested in the uh, six-inch Black Series Jen uh, Geno, so uh, it was something that was uh, pretty cool to to see in that package. Also, um, my kids are big in the Nerf, the Nerf toys and things like that, lightsabers and stuff. So, a couple of blasters from there uh, were pretty cool to see as well. Um, and some kind of some classic stuff. There's some Boa Fett like little miniature die cut cast things of helmets and ships and things. So it's classic, classically done. And um, of course, they're extending the line of, of those type of uh, uh, collectibles. Yeah, they the exact contents that we we looked at were there were two Nerf guns, one of the Jin Urso variety and one of the Death Trooper. And that one, when you press down the the trigger, duh, the trigger, uh, it makes some noises, so that's pretty cool. It lights up. Fancy. Ooh, Nerf, look at you. Look at you. You're all grown up. And we've got the 6-inch Black Series of Jen Urso and a 6-inch Black Series of Cassian Andor. Then we had the um, the bigger figs what, that Hasbro puts out. What would you say? Those are about 12 inches. I got the, yeah. We got the Death Trooper of that. And then we got a 3 and 3 quarter inch Jen Urso and a 3 and 3 quarter inch Stormtrooper which is great. And then I got, we got the Death Trooper mask, and then we got the, the miniature helmets of Boosh and Boba Fett, and then the Inquisitor's, Inquisitor's TIE Advanced prototype. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tom, is holding it up for those of you on News Channel 8 who can see this. Just kidding. There is no News Channel 8. That was a Tony Kornheiser reference. So we had a first attempt at Periscope, and it was so exciting because we sat in the car and it was dark and you could barely see us, and it lasted for probably 17 seconds. So that's the quality you get, you know, from coffee with Kenobi's Periscope, I guess. We're going to try to do something a little bit more fancy that when we can actually see a little bit better. So we're going to go maybe wait in line outside the store and get the ambiance of standing outside in the cold. The wind, the wind, yes, the, the wind nipping at our, at our toes like Jack Frost as we await for its Friday fun. All right, we are back. Now we actually braved it. We came outside of the car in, in the cold, but I'm quite comfortable in my, in my stylish Rebels jacket. Corey is not wearing a jacket. He didn't plan. Failing to plan is planning to fail, as I tell my students. So as we're walking up to the store, we find uh, friends of ours from last year's Force Friday, and we've got Mr. Funko Pop here. So how's it going, man? Excited for Force Friday again? Very much so. What is it that you have your eye on now? Uh, looking to get some of the Black Series figures and then get some of the pops. Cool. Is there a certain character right now that you already have found that you have already gravitated towards, even though we haven't really seen much about any of these characters? Really liking uh, to see the backstory of Jin and see, see where her story is going to lead. Yeah. Absolutely. What about you, man? What, do you, what are the things that you're interested in? Uh, anything involving a death trooper. Yeah. Those guys look awesome. They're pretty cool. We got the mask earlier today, and it's got a thing on the side where every time he talks, the green lights up. Yeah, they're pretty slick. They're pretty slick. Are you a Funko Pop guy as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Any? How are we doing over on Periscope? Doing good. We've got what we were watching. All right. Any questions? Hello, from Indiana. Hello, Indiana. Well, Darth Taxis, what are you looking forward to getting? Not sure yet. What about? Well, let's 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 call in. You, what, what are the things that you want? Is it certain characters or certain kind of figures, or what are you interested in? This is Tom, by the way. Hey, everybody. Um, I think the, what, I, you know what I'm most looking forward to or what my, uh, my kids want? My kids want the, uh, some Funkos and uh, anything Rebels. I don't know if there'll be anything Rebels here tonight, but uh, yeah. definitely they're looking for some Sabine, uh, Chopper, um, Zeb, and those things. Yeah, I'm hoping. I know that there's the big nails. Do you guys know about if the the Rebels Funko will be in this release, or is it going to be later? I think the Sabine one is going to be in a week, the week later, uh, the, the October seventh one. The only Rebels thing I know coming out are the three and three quarter inch figures. There's yeah. Kanan without the helmet. Yeah. yeah, the Kanan Stormtrooper. That's totally. That's that's probably the first thing I'm going to look for. To be honest with you, the it's kind of interesting to see how they are marketing this. Did you? What do you guys think of the Rebels Funko, Corey? We can switch. I'll hold the. Periscope here. The Rebels Funko, uh, yeah, definitely. It's pretty cool to see those uh, come out. I think it's exciting to see um, them as they are, looks like from season one. Um, 
but yeah, I think I think Funkos are nice to see um, as far as them branching out as for. Um, it seems like they're doing a lot of offshoots, characters, uh, smaller characters, and things. So it's nice to see Rebels uh, in that mix. Texas says he thinks there's only one. Texas says he thinks there's only one Kanan per box. Oh, for the. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Come on, Texas, really? That's not fair. We want more than that. We want more than that. Yeah. Oh, Sabine too. Well, so on the Funko Rebels, did you look at all of them? Yeah, I should probably talk in the microphone. That's a good idea. Uh, you know. Yeah, it's cool to, to see those, like I said, and um, it's nice to see that I'm talking. Oh, is it the light? I think it's the light. Okay, so we don't, we don't control these lights in here, so it's fun. But, yeah, those Funko are coming out. I think uh, what's interesting, too, they did a lot of the um, Force or the uh, Rogue One ones, too. So those are all coming out as well. So it's nice, nice uh, release to uh, see them and available. Personally, I thought they all looked amazing. I thought that the, the one that looked the most odd, I thought Zeb looked a little bit creepy. With those glowing green eyes? Yeah. Well, thank you, Halsey, for sharing us. We appreciate that. Yeah, glowing, yeah, there's the picture. I'm going to, here we go. Let me show the, see that? We're showing it on Periscope now. Yeah, I mean, he's fun because we love Zeb, but it's definitely creepy. Did you guys happen to see the Star Wars show this week, how Steve Bloom was on, and they asked him to say different classic Star Wars lines and different voices, and he he talked like Star Scream, and then he talked like Donald Duck, and but he would quote different lines. It was pretty great. Yeah, exactly. Of the Funko, I'm gonna go out on a limb, Corey, and say that you want the same one I do, the Canon. Yeah, I think so. Um, I wouldn't mind getting all of them. I I, I think it's a good, a good collection to have. Uh, like I said, I think the Funko does a good job of representing the characters uh, themselves, as far as Star Wars or any type of. Um, you know, comic culture or geek culture, whatnot, and you know, I think they're just a, a nice collectible to have. And like I said, they're releasing all of them, the whole crew. So it's nice to see that too. Did you also notice how far we've come? Like, of all the figures they have for Rebels, they have actually two different Sabines. She's the only oh, right. character that there are two of for that cast. So that's pretty cool. Tom, what about you? We, we talked about Funko. Are you inter- you're, are you going to try to swipe as many Rebels ones as you can? Yeah, I think that's the plan is the Rebels. Uh, I know my, my girls really like the Rebels ones. The one that I'm disappointed that I'm not going to be able to get tonight is the store that's closed. I uh, really wanted the Jen Urso. Uh, so I guess we'll just have to uh, make another trip tomorrow. I mean, geez, what a horrible thing. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, Texas wants to know if we'll ever see a Dengar Funko. Gee, I should be holding this instead of, you know, letting you hold this for me. I'm shivering. If you guys can't realize this, I don't know. I'm not cold. I'm just like, I'm like a horse. I shiver. I don't know. It's, it's, the, it's the energy of the night. It's the energy I of the night, yes. It is, the energy. It um, says, hashtag free Dengar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this could be true. Um, I don't know yet. Texas, are you going to be going to Celebration Orlando this year? Star Wars show is number one, Mark W. I agree with you, Mark W. 34. He's trying. All right, well, we're going to sign off for a little bit, and, and Corey's going to build a fire, and we'll be back with you shortly. Okay, I just finished getting out of the store there for uh, Force Friday and Rogue Friday. Um, we are definitely happy with our, our finds. Um, quite a fun crowd. I think um, we had a lot of folks from the 501st there. Uh, cheering us on and walking around, give us a hard time about being rebels. And that was fun. I think it was pretty cool to see them uh, live in action and spearing on the spirit of uh, Star Wars. So uh, for me, the, I, you know, what a, actually a nice group in the line. Uh, I spoke to them for quite a few time, quite a long time, and they got to know these guys in line. There were, but what did you say, 20 people in the line, Dan? Yeah, I'd say 20, 25 people for sure. Yeah, we were like fourth and fifth in line. And uh, just chatting it up till the time to count down. Uh, boys came out, let us in, and uh, let us know where all the figures were at, actually, all the displays and whatnot. So that was really cool, too. We'd have to hunt through the store and necessarily uh, find things out. Now, I will preface this, too. Uh, our first choice was to go out to Target, where we did last year, keep up the tradition, uh, and see what they had out there. But unfortunately, they were closed this evening in our area. So. Uh, second choice was Toys R Us. We went to Toys R Us and claim, uh, claimed our spot. Um, got in the store, like I said, they were giving uh, exclusive t-shirts away, uh, posters as well, which is pretty cool, free stuff there. Um, 
and then you know they had two displays, uh, like a small um, side display when you walked in to the towards the right side, uh, and they had a lot of stuff. I I, mean, I felt like I didn't uh, necessarily see something I didn't um, didn't want um, necessarily. I think uh, everybody was nice enough to just get what they wanted and kind of move on. It was absolutely a very gracious crowd of people that we were with and. Yeah, it was, this was really cool. We were just talking about the fact that this was exciting and intense, but it was nowhere near the kind of the euphoria that was Force Friday, the very first Force Friday for The Force Awakens. And I think there are a number of reasons for that, primarily the fact that, you know, this movie doesn't have Han Solo in it right. or anyone familiar like that, per right. se. Jyn Erso is very neat, but we have not seen her in action yet. Could be quite different if, you know... In the future, there was more Jyn or so things coming out. But it was a nice... I won't say they were this subdued. They, they were reserved as far as, like, there was nobody pushing or anything like that. We were just... Everybody was kind of ran to their spots, and the manager there came out and spoke with us very very gracious, very direct about what was going very on. He was, yeah, he was a very nice guy. He seem happy. He seemed to really enjoy the moment almost as much as we did. Yeah, you know. Hopefully. And so when you walk in, there was this big display... It was just the action figures. Last year, my big beef was when I first ran out to where all of this stuff was designated, there were, there were no three and three-quarter figures. And then when, by the time I figured out where they were, pretty much all the ones I wanted were gone. This year was not that case. They were all, there was a huge, huge selection. The number one thing I was looking for, as Corey knows, was Kanan in the Stormtrooper gear. And they had a million of those, so I grabbed that right away. Found K2SO, grabbed him, and then I found Sabine, which was so great. I wasn't 100% sure that she would be available as a three and three quarter inch figure, so I got her as well. Corey mentioned we got the free Funko Pop Rogue One t shirt, and we got a poster too. Not a Funko Pop, just a Rogue One t or poster. That was fun. I just, there's just so much. It was like, I would say, subdued adrenaline for this, would you say? Yeah, I mean, I. I I always get my anxiety always seems to go up for some reason I don't know why you know you always think you're not gonna get what you need or want or something like that this wasn't the case this was uh, this was nice uh, like I said it was subdued um, it was a great experience I think all around um, like I said uh, yeah I walked in and went to the, this, the display there uh, first thing I grabbed was a six inch black series K2SO which I was looking forward to get, grabbing there's plenty to get um and then kind of looked around a little more, and, and as our fans and family know that I'm not necessarily a huge collector, so just kind of hunting whatever kind of caught my eye. Uh, another character, another six-inch black series uh, caught my eye was the, uh, I think it's the tank trooper, tank driver trooper. Yeah, I know. Uh, and hover it tank. The hover tank uh, driver, which apparently was the exclusive yeah. at Toys R Us. I had a little sticker on there, and uh, we got pictures on our Instagram, which is brand new, so check us out on Instagram. Uh, some of those photos that we'll put up pretty soon. And um, I grabbed that guy, and then I grabbed uh, Sabine as well, because my daughter probably loved to play Sabine and, and have fun with her. So um, a lot of other things we kind of saw, I think, was you know, tempting to get, I think, Dan. Uh, one of them was the Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels got some cool uh, X-Wing high style of cars. They had Slave One and uh, TIE Fighter. Uh, what was some of the things you saw, Dan, that you kind of maybe passed up? The, the number one thing that stands out to me that I passed up was Hera yeah. with the A-Wing, the yeah. three and three quarter inch Hera. That was really, really cool. One of my favorite episodes from season two of Star Wars Rebels. So that was neat. I really enjoy looking at that. I like looking at the Black Series figures, the six inch. I don't necessarily gravitate towards those besides the very first wave that ever came out. But fortunately Hasbro sent me a Cassian Andor, so I have that. And you got K2SO, which was the thing you absolutely had your eye on. So that was neat. I just like looking at everything. I like looking at every, these clean displays of the brand new boxes, mint in package. They haven't been rummaged through. There are no such thing as row one peg warmers right now. Although I sort of have expectations about what they might be, you know, a few months down the road. I love, love, love the TIE Striker. That vehicle is amazing. I'm going to get that eventually. Because it, it was a heck of a, of a good, nice thing. The U-Wing is interesting. I want to see it in action first. It's not necessarily one I will buy a three and three-quarter inch version of that the, the figures can fit into. But 
I liked it. I think it was just overall kind of the ambiance of Rogue One. I love the packaging for Rogue One, which when it first came out, we got to talk mm-hmm. with Steve Sansweet on, yeah. which was really nice. So there's just a lot of cool things going on. Yeah, I will uh, also say that I uh, was looking uh, for some Funko Pops. Uh, it didn't seem like they had, they didn't have anything new uh, from uh, this release. Uh, Rogue One characters or anything exclusive, so it was kind of a bummer there. And Corey did mention we have our brand new Coffee with Kenobi Instagram account. I've been toying with the idea of that for a while, and I thought, well, we're going to have a lot of cool pictures. And I'm not really as good about sharing them on Twitter as I could be. Uh, we do more of our articles there and our blogs and news stories on our Twitter feed. And I thought, well, let's, let's focus on some pictures. I, I enjoy taking pictures of the Star Wars merchandise and things going on. It's a lot of fun. So we're going to be uploading quite a few of those overnight, which this is, of course, Force Friday. And by the way, Corey, yeah. it's 40 minutes into Force Friday, September 30th. 40 minutes. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> exactly. It's funny because we talked about the line how... Today is Dan's birthday, and how much fun he's going to have. And, and, and of course, today is also national, the national, Pod- international, international, international podcast uh, celebration day. Uh, so it's it's kind of a accumulation of such great things. Uh, it's funny because we were standing there in in the store, kind of checking out, checking out what we had on our hands, and, and kind of fumbling around with things. And Dan realized, oh yeah, it's my birthday. <laughs> it was kind of a funny realization, a, a fun moment. Uh, a, a fun way to kind of experience the moment. I think it was fun. And that's kind of tough stuff that I, I enjoy too. The those in moment jokes or uh, yeah. experiences that we have as just as fans and as friends. And so, happy birthday to you, buddy! Thank you very much. I appreciate that, dude. I guess we should also say since we are proudly sponsored by Tops, the Tops digital card yeah. trader collecting app, they have brand new Rogue One sets out now. We jumped on that right away while we were in line for Force Friday. There was a ton of cool stuff. Uh, a lot of cool Rogue One images. I believe there are, what, eight in this set? Is that right? Eight in the, I think there's eight in one premiere set, and then there's a secondary set. I think I want to say it has 12. Don't quote me on that, though. So. And if you get the secondary set, they increase your odds for future Rogue One sets that are coming out in the near future. So be sure to download the cards, the top stitch of Card trading app. Card trading app, that's right. Because they've got all the latest and greatest Rogue One images, and it's very, very cool to kind of get more of an idea of what's going on. It appears our Force Friday midnight run has come to its conclusion, Mr. Club. Basically, we tried to go to five stores tonight. Mm-hmm. Only one delivered, and it delivered in a beautiful way. So we are, trust me, we are in good shape. So... Overall, overall impressions of this Force Friday? Overall impressions. Well, um, what turned it didn't be maybe disheartening at the beginning uh, seemed to win out, uh, uh, seeing as we had uh, some great finds. Uh, we found everything we wanted to get our hands on. And we also were able to, you know, work with some, you know, see, hang out with some bunch of cool guys, a bunch of cool people online, and uh, kind of talk and get to know each other and joke around. But yeah, the, the last half, I guess, here is kind of a bust as far as, yeah, one more kind of coming up short. Uh, they didn't have anything necessarily out, uh, which we kind of talked about in the store, walking, kind of walking out, thinking like, okay, you know, the whole reason that they have midnight releases uh, is for fans that want to get online first, want to be able to get their hand on stuff, you know, in person, uh, be there to be able to experience it. And my mind is like, like that's the reason you know you, you do a midnight release but then if you go to a store and they don't have that stuff you know you go home and go to bed but then the next day it's all released for the you know the world to consume it's, you're kind of like you know you're back in line again trying to find things and now we're scouring new stores to find new things you know I don't know I guess I, I kind of feel like a little bit torn I guess with the whole experience in that you wish we had more options and more opportunities. The thing, I think what spoiled us is last year for Porch Friday for the Force Awakens. There were aisles, there were three or four aisles in Target of Star Wars things that weren't toys, like t-shirts and costumes and coffee mugs and notebooks and pencils. Yeah. And I wanted to see all that stuff. Now, tomorrow morning, which is like, what, in four hours for us right now? Sure. 
uh, we're going to see that stuff. Indubitably, we will. But it would just be nice to see it. So I, I agree. So I'm going to give this sort of a, I guess, a C plus. Since we, I mean, this isn't Rebels Reactions. But <laughs> if we're going to grade it, I'd say the first Force Friday for me was an A minus. And this one is a C plus. I think that's fair. I agree with that, that grading system. And I mean, like, I wouldn't say that I'm like, oh man, I didn't get anything, or I didn't, nobody had anything. Like, I think Coach just did a great job of getting this place out and having things available. Like you said, though, I mean, I want to see more stuff, notebooks and pencils and all that side stuff that you can kind of come to find out. So I'm excited to see that stuff in stores. And you know, like I said, I'll still probably go out once in a while to hunt it down and see what's available. And it will be available, that's the thing. It's, it'll be out there, but I'm just hoping for more. We'll see. But more importantly, how did all of you do with your Force Friday hunting and your collecting? This is a great, great time in Star Wars. It's almost like Star Wars every few months gives us the little holidays, whether it's the premiere of Rebels or a new Star Wars film, which is the best part, of course, or new merchandise, or Force Friday, or May the 4th be with you, or Star Wars Reads the There's always something Star Warsy. Coming around the bed and coffee with Kenobi will be there to give you our own unique blend of analysis with the side of humor. <laughs> this is, you know what this is, right? This is like slap happy Danny in Corey situation. <laughs> like driving home from Celebration Anaheim kind of thing. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it's just like, it's funny because it's... It's, it's true. We talking about, well, we were talking about this in the car too, how uh, kind of off the cuff, we don't have anything written, we're just kind of talking to be talking. Well, this is kind of what the show, I guess, we originally talked about was like just two two dudes just out, you know, doing our Star Wars thing, and this is it. This is the thick of it as far as you know, being like you know, almost two o'clock in the morning, and we're a little slap back as you said, and having a good time. So yeah, a lot of fun. So thanks again, to everybody, for supporting us tonight on Periscope, on our website, on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram. now on Instagram, and an experiment with our Facebook Live feed. So. Signing off for a cough with Kenobi, it's Dan Z. Chewie, get us out of here! If you would like to respond to our question of the show, have a comment, or just want to say hello, send us an email or mp3 at feedback at coffeewithkenobi.com. Or if you have a specific question or comment for either of us individually, email us at danz at coffeewithkenobi.com or Corey C at coffeewithkenobi.com or visit us at coffeewithkenobi.com and click on the contact us section or comment on one of the stories featured on the site. If you enjoy the show, please write a review in iTunes or Stitcher. You can also like the show on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash coffeewithkenobi as well as keep up to date at our Twitter feed at coffeewithkenobi. You can also find us on Tumblr at coffeewithkenobi.tumblr.com. If you enjoy the jazz music, the album is Eye to Eye by Steve Torok. Give the evacuation code signal. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here. Move along. Move along.